Hello, welcome to Jesus the Good Shepherd Anglican Church. My name is Father Howard Giles. Today is November the 19th, 2021. I thought I would share today uh, some thoughts about Jesus the Good Shepherd and why we are here in Henderson, Nevada, uh, proclaiming the gospel. What makes us uh, unique or what makes us stand out? Why are we here? Uh, we are a traditional Anglican church, and by traditional I mean that we believe that uh, the Bible is the uh, Word of God. Uh, we believe uh, that the Lord calls us to live holy and righteous lives. We believe that that applies to sexuality, that marriage is between a man and a woman, and that uh, primary um, aspect or purpose of marriage is for uh, the begetting of children. More than that, that uh, a man and a wife uh, are to live together uh, lifelong and to uh, sacrifice, uh, submit themselves to one another uh, for the raising of children. And so uh, we also teach uh, chastity, that there is to be chastity outside of marriage and that there is to be fidelity inside of marriage. And so that is uh, really core to uh, why we're here and what it is that we teach. We have a purpose, mission, and vision statement at Jesus the Good Shepherd uh, that I think um, fleshes out and gives some structure to some of those uh, basic ideas. Uh, but we have to give, I think, that uh, first uh, clear understanding that we are traditional because, um, uh, you know, sometimes people come looking for information about Jesus the Good Shepherd and what sets us apart. And uh, that is going to be something that... Uh, may unfortunately set us apart from some other churches that uh, maybe are teaching something new that's come out of the sexual revolution and are teaching that, uh, that cultural promiscuity. So uh, what is our purpose, mission, and vision statement? I'm going to be reading from the King James Version uh, of the Bible. It's a, a favorite of mine and what I have handy here uh, in front of me today. So our purpose statement is our why statement. Why are we here? What, what is the, the purpose, the reason that the Lord uh, planted this church? And that comes from Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16. The Lord says, I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And so uh, I had a, a wonderful parishioner, a founding member who said, I don't like that fat and strong part as a uh, fat and maybe sometimes strong person. And uh, I have to agree with him about that. Um, it, this is a verse that uh, the Lord gave to me and I thought, ah, do I really want that? Um, and so if I was just picking a verse, I might have just picked something like, uh, you know, for God so loved the world or uh, something like that. But the, the Lord gave this to us. And so we have to we have to live with that um, and learn and be changed by it. So uh, what does this mean? There are really four groups uh, that the Lord is um, after, that he is, um, that he is focused on. Uh, who are those groups of people? Those who are lost, um, that is those that don't know where their home is. They don't know where their father is. They don't know um, their purpose, right? So they're lost. Um, those that are driven away, so maybe they had once been in the church or they'd been in in prayerful fellowship with the Lord, but they were driven away um, by perhaps church politics or, you know, a negative relationship or some, um, something, um, you know, bad happened in that, in that relationship. Um, he says that he's going to um, bind up the broken. So uh, those people that are broken, that have had uh, trauma, that have had stress in their lives, um, the Lord wants to heal them and to, um, to bind them up. And then uh, to strengthen the sick, so those who have illness. And of course, this can be physical, but spiritual, emotional, mental illness, uh, those illnesses that keep us from living that full and beautiful life. And so the Lord uh, desires to, to seek those people and to, to heal, to bring them back, to uh, bring those that are lost. And, and so we have these, these four groups again. So uh, here again, who they are, the lost, uh, the driven away, the broken, and the sick. So it's out of God's love for those folks that he um, has planted Jesus the Good Shepherd. It's because of God's love for them, not because of us or because of what we want to do, but because of God's uh, love for them. That's what we're responding to. 
than those of us that are fat and strong, uh, he is uh, disciplining us, right? He is, um, you know, removing things that would keep us from being in service to uh, the Lord and to those that he loves. So he would instruct us and, um, and he would uh, you know, restrict us uh, so that we're able to fulfill that, that mission. So that's the why. That's why Jesus the Good Shepherd is here. Uh, so then what do we do? What is it that the Lord is calling us to do? So this is um, the Lord's uh, desire, his love that we're responding to. And, and what do we do? We call that our mission statement. So our mission statement is in, in answer to what? We get this from Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 2, verse 42. So Acts 2, 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And what became clear to us at the beginning as we founded Jesus the Good Shepherd in 2009 uh, was that there are these four groups of people, the sick, the, the broken, the lost, the driven away. And then there are four actions that we are taking up as the church. So the four primary things that we're doing. Uh, we're teaching the apostles doctrine. So what's been taught always since the time of the apostles. Uh, we're in fellowship with one another. So that means that we're in relationship. We're listening to one another. We're, um, we're building you know, relationship and fellowship. Uh, we're breaking the bread. And so this is Holy Communion. These are the sacraments, right? The breaking of bread. Uh, is the sacramental life that we share as the church. So we've always had Holy Communion. We've always celebrated a sacramental life. And then in the prayers, that definite article is there. It's the prayers. So it's not just any kind of prayer, right? There are certain prayers that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to be praying for those in authority. We're supposed to be praying for the poor. We're supposed to be uh, praying for those that are lost and driven away, right? So you're getting that theme. So there are these four things that we do. And there are lots of parachurch organizations that are wonderful, lots of um, groups that uh, do one of these things. They may focus on fellowship or they may focus on doctrine and teaching or uh, they may focus on, um, on prayer. Uh, but we're only really the church when we're doing all four and when we're doing all four together. And so, of course, a Sunday morning worship is going to include all four of these things. We're going to have teaching. We're going to have fellowship. We're going to have the sacrament, Holy Communion, and we're going to say the prayers together the prayers of the people. And so when we're doing those four things, uh, we are the church. We're responding to God's love for these four groups. And then the question is, how do we do that? Because um, the attitude that we have is so important. And I say all the time in my sermons, uh, anyone who's been around, um, I pick on teenagers sometimes, but really it's any of us, right? If you're in a work environment and you're with people that are recalcitrant and they're kind of dragging their feet and I'm going to do what you want me to do, but I'm not going to move fast and I'm not really going to enjoy it or have any enthusiasm. You know, there's a world of difference between that and somebody that does their job with, with a real zest, with a love, with a, a passion, right? And we want to be that kind of person. We want to be that kind of a church. We don't want to just, you know, do what the Lord tells us to do because we have to, or because we're um, afraid, you know, of some consequence. We want to do it out of a love, out of a passion. And so we get that attitude, which we call our vision statement. So the vision that we have from uh, the letter to the Hebrews, letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, uh, verses 23, 24, and 25. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So again, we noticed uh, very early that there are four actions, uh, four attitudes, if you will, that go with those actions. So the actions are the, the fellowship, the prayers, etc. from uh, Acts. And then there's these four attitudes that we have. Um, we're, we're holding fast, right? The attitude of, of clinging, right? We're clinging to the Lord. We're, we're clinging. We're not just uh, teaching what he uh, has to say. We're not just listening but we're clinging to the Lord's word. We're clinging to his um, purpose and to his vision, right? So we're holding fast the profession of our faith. So Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We're holding to that uh, statement. And then we're provoking one another and to love and good works. So when we're in fellowship, we're not just uh, listening blithely. We're not just standing by, but we're looking for opportunities. We're listening for opportunities to provoke one another to love and good works. Here's an opportunity to love. Here's an opportunity to serve. 
right? So we're provoking um, one another in this positive way. Uh, not forsaken is is um, given as a as a as an opposite. Uh, but if we think of what the opposite of forsaking is, it's uh, diligence, right? That we're going to be diligent and disciplined in our worship together. So not forsaking the assembly means uh, we're diligent about s assembling together. Uh, it is um, a purposeful and a diligent, disciplined act that we get together. So we don't just wake up Sunday morning and say, oh, do I feel like getting together or, uh, when we have Bible study? Or do I think about, uh, do I feel like going this week? No, we have a, a diligence, a discipline a practice of, of meeting together. And then we're exhorting one another. We're exhorting one another again into love and good works. It's this encouragement. It's this enthusiastic, um, you know, motivating of one another. And more as we see the day approaching. So often in the church uh, and in the world today, we see all oh, things are getting bad. Things are um, getting worse. Things are hard. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Read Holy Scripture. Things are bad. Things have been bad. We're in the middle of a storm, right? The storm is going to come. And uh, we can't be surprised by that. We're not naive. We're not going to say, oh, no. Oh, no, there's danger. There's a storm coming. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Life is hard and uh, short and dangerous. And there are going to be hard times. But the Lord is faithful. And so what's our plan? So the more that we see the storm, the more that we see the danger, the more we're provoking and exhorting and encouraging one another. That attitude deepens and strengthens the more danger that we see. We don't shy away. We don't become discouraged. We press in and we hold fast to the faith of the Lord. So the more that the world pushes promiscuity, the more that it pushes uh, following some inner voice rather than following the Lord's voice, um, personal identity, personal politics rather than the purposes of God, um, the more diligent we become in worship, the more steadfast we become in holding fast to the traditions of our ancestors, of those Christians that have gone before us, the apostles, right? We're not holding fast to what was taught yesterday or the day before that. We're holding fast to the, the teaching of the apostles, the apostles' doctrine, what's been taught always, everywhere, by everyone. We don't do that perfectly, Jesus the Good Shepherd. We fall short. We've fallen short for 12 years. But what I can promise you is that we will be diligent. We will continue. We will hold fast. We will profess the faith. And we will encourage one another. All the more as we see the day approaching. Join us. Be encouraged. Encourage us. Join us in this task that the Lord has given to us. It is mighty and it is beautiful. And he is faithful. Thank you.